Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to go over power factor and power factor correction. Now, power factor is very important because it is not only relevant to FE Electrical and Computer Exam specification, but it also makes an appearance in the P power exam specification. So in, if you invest your time right now and properly understand power factor and power factor correction, it is also going to help you with your P power exam preparation. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of power factor in which we are going to go through some additional practice problems on power factor. So what I've done in this lecture is basically I've taken an extract from my live training class for P power on the topic of power factor. So I went through this discussion with my P power students during the weekly live training sessions. And we had some interesting discussion on the topic of power factor, which I'm sure that you will also benefit from. And in that session, we also did some additional practice problems. So just like the previous additional practice problem lectures, please stop at every new problem when you encounter it, try and attempt it yourself and then see how I go about solving that particular problem. I'm sure you will benefit from this lecture as well. Yeah, power factor basics. So I'm gonna cruise through this guys. I've explained it in quite a bit of detail in the lecture. The important things that I'm gonna emphasize over here, well, power triangle, we know that power factor can be looked at in the context of voltage and current, okay? It's basically the phase shift between the voltage and the current. And it can also be looked at in the context of your power triangle, okay? When we are just dealing with purely powers, your apparent power, your active power, and your reactive power. So a couple of things that we need to remember is that whenever we are doing the power factor correction, the active power really doesn't change. Your capacitor bank is not going to impact your active or real power, okay? It only changes the reactive power, okay? Or, or to be, more specific, it changes the reactive power supplied by the utility or the source. Because when you add a capacitor in parallel, this capacitor is a source of reactive power and it basically locally provides uh, reactive power to your load. And that basically results in a decreased draw of power from the utility. This is actually the right way of looking at it. And I think that I've probably mentioned that in the lecture. Okay, rather than thinking that magically, you know, this is going to reduce, um, it's the reactive demand is still there by your inductive load, but it is being locally provided. Okay, so um, I think I brought this diagram in one of our earlier lectures as well uh, for discussion purposes. Again, looking at purely uh, power triangle, whenever we are dealing with the lagging power factor, and I've explained this in the lecture, your Q is positive, okay? It is, it is, it is above the X axis, which basically means that your angle theta is positive, okay? But with the lagging power factor, and I have a practice problem later on, the theta is positive, okay? But the phase angle for the current is going to be negative, okay? And we've discussed this in the past as well. When it comes to the leading power factor, your Q is going to be negative, it's pointing downwards, the theta is negative, but your phase angle for the current, I phase angle or theta I, if I can call it, is basically going to be positive. You don't need to memorize this, right? Uh, you can work your way through the power triangle. And uh, yeah, and we've discussed that in terms of voltage and current as well. And these are the formulas. Let me see if I've harmonized these formulas with the handbook so in the handbook, one of the things that I don't like there is on page 66, at the bottom of page 66, they use this term delta P reactive, which I find very confusing because P 95% of the time in all the textbooks is associated with what? It's associated with reactive power. I think they should simply change that to delta Q, okay? Uh, so you can use that formula directly, okay? but you gotta make sure that you use your, you're identifying these angles properly, right? The theta one is your initial power triangle. Sorry, initial power angle. So that's your incorrect or poor power factor angle, okay? So 
uh, that's your theta number one. So you can see that over here, theta number one, our reactive power requirement is so large, right? It's in black, this, this, right? And we want to improve it to theta two. So theta two, you can see the smaller angle and the K bar that are being required from the utility are actually lower, so it's smaller. Where does this delta come into play? Who is supplying this delta? The change. It's the capacitor, okay, capacitor. So utility supplies a reactive current um, or reactive power, okay? But when you have the capacitor, now the capacitor is providing the bulk of your reactive power. Utility is still providing, right? Utility is still providing. It's not a unity power factor yet, right? Um, utility will continue to provide your reactive power for your magnetization of the transformer and all of that but it, is, it has been improved significantly, okay? So be very careful with the use of theta one and theta two. And in the, I don't think this formula is provided in the FE handbook, uh, but I think that if they're asking for power factor correction equations, uh, sorry, problems, then it's, it makes sense to include that. But you can derive this from here. I think in the lecture, I do end up deriving it either here or earlier on in three-phase in three-phase systems. Okay, these are pretty simple, straightforward uh, problems. Well, this is not that interesting because it's dealing with both lagging power factors, right? I have a problem later on in which I have leading power factors as well. But anyways, we have 75 kVA. So again, be very careful with kVA, kVAR, and kW, okay? Your kVA is S. Okay, your KVAR is Q and your real power P is equal to KW. So these are all S values. So the first one is 0 0.85 lagging. The other one, the second one is 0 0.75 lagging. This is the uh, voltage and this is the frequency and the overall power factor of the customer's end is unknown. So what we need to do for these type of problems, whenever they're asking for overall power factor, you need to break up uh, the individual loads, okay? So I've broken up this individual load, S1 into P1 and Q1. We'll do the same with S2, P1 and, uh, sorry, P2 and Q2. And then you add them up. The real components are going to add together and the reactive components are going to add together. Once you have this form of the total, Right, and this applies to whether both loads are lagging or leading. I'm gonna explain how it's gonna be different when we get to the leading, but uh, you simply add this and convert that into the polar form or find the magnitude and the ratio of your P, this is the P total or P overall, right? To the S total is basically your um, power factor. And again, if you guys remember in an earlier lecture, we also discussed how we can identify whether the overall or the total power factor is leading or lagging. Since the Q is positive for S total, right? This is a lagging power factor. If Q were negative, then it would be a leading power factor overall. Any questions? Okay. The next one is again, a similar scenario. Oh, okay, now we have a leading power factor. Right, everything is the same except that your customer B, um, yeah, your customer B is at a leading power factor. All right, so let's quickly go through that. So again, the first one remains as is, but for the second one, the theta angle is going to be negative. All right, because the leading power factor. All right, so this is leading power factor. You're going to use a negative theta, and that's going to make a lot of difference because when you use a negative theta. So P for P, it really doesn't matter because cosine theta positive or negative, it's basically the same deal. But when you're dealing with a sine, your negative theta will make this Q2 negative, all right? So what has happened over here is that the value of Q, when we quickly compare it, okay? So this is 62, this is 62 kVAR in the total. And over here, this is only 16.4, right? because the second load has a negative Q2 value. And when we added up 39.5 or 23.1, we ended up with a smaller value of Q overall, okay? And that basically impacts this value, all right? There's nothing magical happening over here. 
your apparent power requirement from the utility has reduced now. It's only 91.4 because this component is smaller. When I compare it to the previous one, it was 109.67 because it's Q, the imagining component was higher. Right now the imagining component is smaller. So my P still remains the same, 90 KW in both cases, but the denominator is actually smaller. So my overall power factor is going to be larger, right? And is this lagging or leading? It's, we can just take a look at the Q of the total and determine whether it's lagging or leading. Since Q is positive, it's, it's lagging. Okay, now this is a question around capacitance that is required to improve the uh, power factor lagging uh, 0.80 to 0.95. So the first power factor, I'm going to identify that as P, PF1, the second one, PF2. Okay, there's an angle theta associated with this, theta one, there's an angle theta associated with this theta two, all right? So keep that formula in mind. I'm gonna write that formula as is, that is on page number 66, at the end of page number 66. I'm using exactly the same notation that they have used. So it's 10 phi one minus 10 phi two. So I'm gonna call them rather than theta, I'm gonna call them phi, okay, they're angles. So as you can see, do I know over here what my real power is, right? My real power is, yeah, well, it's not directly given. Um, so the line voltage is this, and the apparent power is at 0 0.80 is this. So I can actually figure that out because S is given to me as one, two, five, zero KVA, right? And the power factor associated with this is 0 0.80, okay? So I'm gonna simply use one two five zero times 0 0.80, okay? And that's my real power. And the real power remains unchanged. I'm just gonna use that. And in order to find my phi one, I'm just gonna do a cosine inverse of PF one, okay? And for this, I'm just gonna do a cosine inverse of my PF two, and that's it. I will get to know what the Delta P reactive is. Any questions? And then you move on to page 67. And we simply use this in our capacitance equation, okay? So we have P reactive now, we are gonna multiply it by two pi F. So the frequency is given to me as 60 Hertz and the line voltage is 1000 volts, right? So line voltage squared, and that's it. All right, you can draw this neat uh, power triangle as well. Um, and the difference, this delta, is being provided by the capacitor. Okay, so I've given you the line voltage. I've given you the line impedance, okay? And I've told you that this is a real power consumption. Very important to recognize that this is KW, this is not KVA or KVAR. And the real power consumption is at this power factor. And I want to improve it to 0 0.95 and you're asked to install a capacitor bank in parallel with this, with this distribution system. Should have included the question, but uh, uh, calculate the reactive power that must be supplied by this capacitor bank. So we are gonna use that uh, delta P reactive formula essentially, or we can use that, right? But I am taking that same approach that I discussed earlier in one of the earlier problems where you start with your old um, value of S. And first of all, you recognize this 200 KW is gonna remain uh, unchanged, okay? Our original power factor is 0 0.85 lagging. So this angle is positive because it's a lagging power factor. So I calculate the real and the reactive power for um, the given case. For the new case, I have 0 0.95 power factor lagging. This is the angle. Okay, so this is real. And reactive, you can calculate that, all right, through this. Uh, or you can directly multiply the real power with the tangent of this angle that you've calculated in order to figure out what this Q is. Okay, this is a shortcut. Then I have S new and S old. Now, the difference between the two is really the delta QR, delta Q. Okay, because P remains the same. So when we look at the Delta S, right? So this is the new minus the old, 
So the change is this, because the 200 and the 200 cancel each other out, and you're just left with this, okay? And why is it this, why is this negative? Well, that's because the Q2 is a smaller quantity, right? The change is negative. So that there's a reduction uh, in the reactive power, okay? And that delta Q is basically, ha it has to be supplied by the capacitor. Another important thing to remember over here is that for the capacitor, I included this as a negative sign because it's a source of reactive power, right? Uh, it's not consuming the reactive power. Consumption of reactive power or real power is indicated with a plus sign and a supply of real power or reactive power is indicated with a negative sign. Okay, remember that as well. Um, and alternatively, you can go ahead and use a delta P reactive formula that we looked at is equal to P times tangent uh, phi one minus tangent uh, phi two, I believe. Okay, so calculate the capacitance of this capacitor bank. Now that we know delta Q, okay, we can easily calculate that as well. The thing that I like to point out over here is that this delta Q is the magnitude. You have to use the magnitude, okay? I, I explained you what that negative sign meant early on, but when you're calculating this, you have to use the magnitude. And this is the reactive power that you end up with. Sorry, the capacitance that you end up with. Okay, this is an interesting problem. So we have a manufacturing facility. We have three different groups of loads. Okay, the first one is at 0 0.80 power factor la lagging. The second one is at 0 0.80 power factor leading. And the last one is 0 0.75 lagging. And you've been asked to figure out the overall power factor, okay? So the strategy is gonna be the same. Uh, we are going to break this up into the respective P's and Q's, okay? While being mindful of which one is leading and which one is lagging. So A, B, and C. So the interesting one is B, because over there we have a leading power factor, right? So the angle over here for S is going to be negative. Okay, so you have eight, angle negative 36.87. Okay, this, uh, this should have been negative over here. And you end up with this, okay? So now if I want to find the overall power factor, I'm going to sum all of them up. So all the real components add up, all the reactive components add up. I find the magnitude of the apparent power, okay? Or I can just simply look at the uh, phase angle of the apparent power. And that is the power factor angle cosine of that is going to be uh, the power factor angle. Okay, since the Q is positive, I have a lagging power factor. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward. There are three major takeaways when it comes to power factor. The first one is power triangle. Please make sure that you have a good understanding of power triangle. It's composed of S, Q, and P, and we've discussed it in quite a bit of detail. Then we have the concept of lagging versus leading power factor. We did multiple practice problems in this lecture where we saw the impact of the leading power factor on Q. Q turns negative and Q is always positive for lagging power factor. And we also discussed in the context of power factor angle. And last but not the least are the units of measurement. So KW, as we know, refers to P, KVA refers to S, and KVR refers to Q. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS F Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I've also included a special discount link in the text section of this video.